الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My name is Salahuddin Abu Hamza Salahuddin Fogel. I'm 29 years old and I accepted Islam in 2001, May 2001, and now seven years, almost seven years ago. And my way to Islam, I was before I accepted Islam, I was a Protestant. And I went to a Protestant school when I was a youngster, 15, 14 years old. And I went to confirmation. I had a lot of discussions with the priests. And these discussions were mostly about um, contradictions in the Bible. And uh, I realized that even the priests here in Germany, or a lot of priests here in Germany, I doubt about the authenticity of the Bible. And so uh, I left this Christianity when I was almost around 14 years old. I didn't believe in it anymore. And so I, I became an, like an atheist, you know. Sometimes I believed in God and sometimes I had some doubts about the existence of God, of the Almighty God. Later on, um, I um, became a boxer, uh, a, a professional boxer. And I was uh, always thinking about what is the purpose of life, and I wanted to find, I want to search about, I want to search, I want to find the purpose of life in, this, in the different religions, and so I um, decided to uh, um, to uh, to read about all religions. I first began with uh, with Buddhism because uh, Buddhism has a very good image, especially here in Germany. The Dalai Lama is always smiling. And it's sympathetic for the people, but when I read about this religion, when I read the books about this religion, I found uh, some things like that Gautama Buddha was born 50, uh, 50, uh, 50, uh, 563 years before Christ, and that his message was uh, written down 400 years after his death, and that even his historians say that uh, today the message of Gautama Buddha is not uh, any more um, available. Um, so later on, when I was um, in the civilian service in Germany, we can go to military service or civilian service. Civilian service, I had to uh, care for older people, and we had to go to a camp. And this camp, I um, met a Christian missionary, and this Christian missionary was very bad talking about Islam. He was not talking about other religions. He was not too much uh, calling the people to uh, to um, to his uh, to his faith. He was not calling the people too much Christianity, but he was talking, talking, talking bad against Islam. And so I just uh, found, in my impression, he was a very intolerant guy. And so I just tried to uh, discuss with him, especially because I had a lot of uh, Turkish or Muslim friends but they were not practicing Muslims. And uh, so I was discussing with him, but without knowledge. I had no, no knowledge about Islam. Uh, and, late, and so I decided to read the Quran, and a translation, and to, uh, a German translation of the Quran. And uh, when I came back from this, from this uh, camp, from this civilian camp for the, civilian, uh, for the people in the civilian service, I found a translation of the Quran uh, with my sister. My sister had a translation of the Quran, and so I decided to read the Quran. So I read the Quran from the beginning to the end. And what I realized when I was reading this book that in no book, no religious book, no holy book, the Almighty God is uh, described like in the Quran. And the Quran describes uh, why you are living, what's the purpose of life. And what, what is the aim of your life, the paradise, how you come away from hell. And um, I don't know, but in myself, you know, there came a feeling, you know, of God consciousness. But I was afraid to accept Islam immediately, because I was afraid that I will find contradictions later on. And so I decided, okay, now you will read the Bible also from the beginning to the end. So I came. After, after reading the Quran, I read the Bible from the beginning to the end. And afterwards, I read the Quran one more time from the beginning to the end. And afterwards, one more time, the New Testament from the beginning to the end. And, you know, at the beginning there were a lot of question marks. Why is hijab? Why there are such punishments in the, in the Islam? But later on, I saw, you know, when I was 
searching for the truth, I found that these uh, things that, uh, that seem, at the beginning, seem to be very uh, uh, strange for West, for Westerner, that in these things are, are, are always wisdom, always a lot of wisdom. And later on, and uh, later on, I went and went and went, and I found a lot of proofs, also scientifically proofs. And also, like, uh, I, I read a book like Ibn Ishaq, the Seer of the Prophet, the bi biography of the Prophet, and there I found something like uh, that there's a, um, a prophecy about the Prophet Muhammad also in the Bible. And I looked for the Bible and I read this prophecy, and I thought, SubhanAllah, glory be to Allah, what's, what's happening here? And, and later on, I, I read the Quran one more time, three times before before I accepted Islam and had no doubts anymore and I knew that this is a true way scientifically proves logically proves that Islam is the only way to uh, to, the, to Almighty God because all the religions all the religions say we are the only way to the Almighty God but the Islam but Islam has a solution have a solution how can somebody be a Muslim somebody who submits himself to God even if he has never heard something about uh, about uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace and blessings on him, and like in Christianity, you know, this is a big question mark. Like uh, in Romans five, the apostle uh, Paulus, Paul, he says that one man make a sin, and because of this sin, every human being will inherit this sin. Like I cannot translate this to good long in English. And in the in, in the uh, Romans six, he explains that you get this salvation uh, when you accept Jesus. You know, but how can somebody accept Jesus and he has to sin when he never has heard something about Jesus? I know that there are some explanations, but these are explanations are bad explanations. But the Islam has an explanation. For example, in in Surah Al Baqarah, ayat sixty two, it says that the people who were before Christians, who believed in Jesus, and who believed in Moses, according to the teaching of Moses, according to Islam, according to this religion, that teach, pray only to, to, the, to the Creator, and leave the, 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 wor the worship for the creation, that these people will also get salvation. And in the Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, there is also a solution for somebody who lives now. And he lives in the jungle, for example, in South America. And he's a solution that he can also come to the paradise, uh, that he can also enter paradise. And so this is a logical religion, scientific religion, and for me, uh, the only way, and it's the only way to 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 the Almighty God. And I hope that uh, every non-Muslim will really look, and he just uh, really look for the truth. He will search for the truth and just read the Quran and ask the Almighty God, ask the Almighty God that He will lead you the right way. And believe me, if you really from your heart you try to find the right way, the Almighty God will will lead you the right way. And this is my message for all the people that because uh, sometimes the people are very angry when they say who the people who don't enter Islam, they will go to, to hell for eternity. But we don't say this because we, uh, we want something bad for them, but we want something good for them. Because Allah says in, says in, uh, in the third chapter of the Quran, Surah Ali Imran, Ayat 5, uh, 85, and who wants another religion but Islam, who, want, who does not want to accept Islam, he will be in the hereafter among the losers. And among the losers,